New Jersey is an odd mix of urban and rural, poor and affluent, liberal and conservative, provincial and cosmopolitan. It is, after all, one of the most varied states in the nation. But what life was like in 1930s in New Jersey? Buckle up because we're going to witness New Jersey in 1930. The 1930s left an everlasting effect on the history of New Jersey. From the Great Depression through the Landberg kidnapping and the Hindenburg accident, it was a difficult moment in the state. The October 1929 stock market crash signified the start of the Great Depression, which would continue until the advent of World War II, with the unemployed in New Jersey ranging from a quarter to a third of the workforce, with black Americans accounting for more than half of the unemployed. The per capita income in New Jersey decreased from $839 in 1929 to $433 in 1933, and 140 banks collapsed between 1928 and 1933. A child's life in New Jersey in the 1930s was substantially different from a child's life now. The Great Depression had a strong impact on children and their families because millions of people were impoverished and had little money to spend on pleasure or entertainment. For low- and middle-income children, attending school was considered a luxury. Schools were overcrowded and underfunded, and an estimated 20,000 schools shuttered in America. There were no buses or vehicles, so children had to walk long distances all the time. Because racism was so pervasive, many schools were separated. Roosevelt's New Deal promised increased access to education, but fell short on many fronts. During the Great Depression, many children worked rather than went to school to support their families. Since families couldn't afford much for their children, most of their clothes were old, and young individuals frequently went barefoot. The majority of middle-class boys wore t-shirts with overalls, whereas the majority of middle-class girls wore blouses and simple skirts. Each would have one pair of shoes and one special occasion outfit. If you were the child of a wealthy family, you were spoiled from head to toe. With record unemployment, children compete with their elders for jobs to help contribute to their family's income, frequently foregoing school. Children in the 1930s were at least safeguarded by child labor reform regulations enacted in the 1920s, which limited their working to eight hours and established criteria for minor employment. Many kids worked for themselves, gathering trash to sell or doing odd chores for neighbors. In the midst of drastically reduced revenue, the state government cut its budget from $34.5 million in 1931 to $19.7 million in 1933. Municipalities were driven into bankruptcy when their primary source of revenue, the municipal property tax, decreased drastically as real estate prices fell. Other towns' tough budgetary conditions were aggravated by debt accrued during the 1920s optimism. Both Atlantic City and Asbury Park erected new convention halls in 1929 and 1930 and faced the necessity to pay off their debt during the Depression. Since they lacked the funds to pay their bills and staff, several cities were obliged to issue scrip, future pledges to pay when they could. Other event that could be remembered on 1930s in New Jersey was the German airship Hindenburg of May 6, 1937. It was destroyed by fire as it approaches the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in Ocean County. 36 persons are killed. In the said incident, 13 passengers, 22 crew, and one ground worker died. The voyage from Germany was to be the first of 10 round journeys between Europe and the United States planned for the ship's second year of commercial service. For the mode of communication in New Jersey in 1930s, it is different from ours today. Throughout the 1930s, several kinds of communication were utilized, including radio, newspaper, telephone, and mail. Independent phone companies utilized the first handheld telephone in 1934. The round base rotary dial monophone was its official name. Food was scarce for many households in New Jersey, and many were malnourished. If you were fortunate enough to reside on a farm that was not devastated by the Dust Bowl, you may have cultivated a variety of crops and raised small numbers of cattle. Casseroles and lunches like creamed chipped beef on toast, 
chili, macaroni, and cheese, and creamed chicken on biscuits were popular during the Great Depression. Jello was an inexpensive protein source that made its way into many Depression-era recipes. Despite of the trauma from the past, New Jersey remained the Garden State, and it is continuously striving for the state's economic growth and development. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.